Thanks, Betty. So it's five o'clock on my schedule. Why don't we go ahead and get started? And um, I just wanna welcome each of you to Member Spotlight. Uh, the idea of Member Spotlight is that you will be able to learn a little bit about WAHI members in a new and different way, and a way to make some additional uh, connections and communications with each other. The idea is to share, share some personal uh, inspirational stories about people's journeys along the way. Um, all of us you know, have had a personal narrative and experiences before we got to where we are today. And we wanna share that, share that information and a way to connect with each other. Um, my biggest learning out of being a member with WAHI and then being a, a president of WAHI was the incredible uh, breadth and depth of women and the experience that I had meeting all these amazing women and how do we bring that forward was the idea of the member spotlight. Um, the chat pod, again, you can answer, uh, ask your questions in chat pod. Alice is muting us to make sure that everybody can hear. And if you um, really feel like you got to interject something that Betty says, you know, jump up and down. Alice is going to give us a hand wave and we'll, we'll try to stop at that time. Um, meeting awesome women, having a great glass of happy hour wine together. Tonight we're mm. drinking J. Lore uh, Cabernet. We hope that you're drinking something also equally as fabulous at home. And it always, um, when Betty and I started talking about doing Member Spotlight, what came to mind was, was the old, you know, in the old Fortune magazine, when people still read magazines, was the Doors Scotch ad. And at the back, it was always, you know, who, here's this person and what did they drink? What was their last book they read? What was, you know, what was their favorite thing to do? And that was kind of my mental model for putting this together. And, you know, Dos Equis has the most interesting man in the world, but I think Wahi has the most interesting women in the world. And so what we want to do through Member Spotlight is find out about the most interesting women that we have. And we're just doing a little cross-section with the fabulous women today. So today we're here to welcome Betty Hamilton. She is our uh, dear president for this uh, term. And she is a multidimensional leader on so many different areas. Uh, women's health, federal sector, realtor, WAHI president. Um, and in our membership, she represents 20 years of being a WAHI member. So Betty has just an incredible wealth of experience. She held a 30 year distinguished career with the federal government, culminating as the director of the Office of Women's Health in the US Public Health Service. Uh, she was also the campaign manager for the federal combined federal campaign and past president of Be Bethesda Chevy Chase Business and Professional Women's Club. So Betty and I share coming out of the Washington DC area together. And um, I've enjoyed my relationship with Betty also because I also was part of the federal government in past mm -hmm. lives. And so Betty and I had a number of intersections as I got to know Betty and uh, just really admire her deeply. Um, as a realtor in Hilton Head now, she has been a member of the Hilton Head Association of Realtors and is a recipient for 11 years of the Realtor Service Award. Most notably, Betty is a ovarian cancer survivor and demonstrates her grit and personal resilience each and every day. And my, my uh, grandmother also had ovarian cancer. So again, that was another piece of connection between Betty and myself that um, just totally resonated with me. So what we wanted to do was to start getting to know Betty a little bit more um, as a 20 year WAHI member. She has held a lot of different roles in the organization. Um, and when did you join WAHI and why? I joined WAHI in the year 2000, uh, right after I moved here. Um, and I joined principally because, well, the community that we live in, Indigo Run, also had a women's association. But as many of you probably have already experienced, that keeps you rather focused within a smaller group. I wanted to get to know people in all of the communities and uh, participate in a, a broader range of activities. So that's why I decided to join. And I will tell you that right after I joined, this is a little aside, pardon me if I digress, but right after I joined, I think within a year, um, I was 
picked to be the reservations chair. Now, I will tell you, this is before computers. And <laughs> that's a big job. It was all done by everybody mailed a reservation in. It was done checks. on checks, checks, checks. And it was done on three by five cards. And to try to make a change in the table, whatever, I won't go down that road. But anyway, that was the dark ages. We've come a long way. But that was one of my, um, I, I just loved being part of Wahi back then. And I got into leadership roles rather early. And I treasure the friendships that I've been able to make along the way. And I think that that's, that's the beauty of Wahi. And I'm sure that's why you all have made that step to become a member. Awesome. And uh, one of the other things that Betty and I shared was through an interest group with Couples Gourmet. And that was always my oh. husband affectionately calls Couples Gourmet Dinner with Strangers. Because you start as dinner with strangers. And by the end of your dinner experience with these three other couples for dinner for eight, you're great friends by the time you leave. Mm -hmm. And it's always such a, a great time. And Betty mm -hmm. and I have enjoyed that experience to get together. When you left Washington, how did you just determine that Hilton Head was going to be your home? Hmm. First time I came to Hilton Head, it was not with my husband. Uh, it was back in the 70s. It was with my first husband. And we were going to buy a lot here. They were just starting to sell lots and develop Hilton Head Plantation. But there was something about that visit that I didn't know that would come as a shock to me when we got back home. But when I came to Hilton Head back in the mid 70s, I thought, wow, this is absolutely beautiful. This is where I want to spend the rest of my life. It wasn't the same island back then. It's changed remarkably, but I have to say I've never looked back, never regretted A the little decision. more rustic, perhaps. Oh, very much more rustic. Yes, I remember Abe's Fish House. The, the restaurant and motel on 278. But anyway, yeah, it, it was a choice that I made personally. And when I married my current husband, Neil, right after we got married, I said, we're going to go on a little trip down to Hilton Head, South Carolina, because that's where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. And you have a choice. <laughs> You know what that was. Okay. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Neil and your family. All right. Neil and I have been married going on 39 years. And as you know, I had a former marriage. I have two biological daughters and I have two stepdaughters. And I inherited a blended family. Um, my husband's first wife passed away. So we had four female teenagers in the house. Um, those may have been my darkest years, I don't know. Um, but anyway, of those four girls, um, they've all married and uh, we have eight beautiful grandchildren. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's fantastic. So tell us a little bit about your 30 year federal sector career with the women's health um, and public health. Were you always with the Department of Human Health and Human Services? No, I wasn't. When I first, my first job with the federal government was that summer between high school and, and college or it ended up being nursing school. Um, and I went with the Navy department. Um, they had some openings there. So that was my first engagement with the government. And um, then I left there at the end of the summer to go into nursing school. Well, that didn't work out too well. Uh, so I got at another point in my life, I went back to the federal government and went back to the Navy Department, actually. So I've had a little bit of that military, but I was always, while I was with the Navy Department, I was always in a research area. 
uh, naval research. So there's a scientific side of me that bubbles up every now and then. Um, so then uh, a number of years later, after I had moved and, and had children and all that kind of stuff going on, um, I went back to work with the federal government. That's when I joined the public health service and um, was employed in a number of capacities. Um, there were there was a period of time that I left the public health service. Um, most of you who don't work for the government aren't familiar with reduction to enforce. So when there was a reduction in force in the government, I decided, you know, I was always, my main aim was always to keep my career path moving forward, whatever I did. So I left the public health service briefly and I went with the social security administration. And back then was welfare reform. So I was involved with writing the regulations for the new welfare reform laws. When the dust settled back at the public health service, I went back. That's my first love, the health field. So I had multiple jobs uh, in the public health service, moved around a lot because always moved that career forward. So you change jobs a lot. Um, so eventually I got into um, the women's health field and that really didn't start until the 80s when we were doing um, focused more in the public health service on uh, research around women's health issues uh, so that's when i really got so is that out. part of donna shalala's legacy was creating the women's health office and, and part of the public health Group. yes Yes, she created an office at the department level. And then each one of the uh, various branches of the public health service had their own office of women's health. So there was a lot of collaboration going on. So back what then, including Francis Collins and I just lost the name. Donna? No, 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 no. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, it'll come back. Excuse me, ladies. It's my 80 year old brain. Okay. <laughs> so what made um, you got to work with Donna Shalala as a cabinet level secretary for yes. health and human services? What made her special as a leader and make her tick? I really admire- What did you take away from her? What did know? I take away from her? that it doesn't matter how short you are, how small you are in stature, you can have a powerful impact on this country and the world, really. Donna Shalala was a remarkable woman. She was, she was very endearing. She was a re remarkable leader. Uh, as a female, I watched her command over senior level men in the, in the federal government uh, and was always in awe of her. And the, the story about the combined federal, federal campaign, it's the same type of fundraising that you, most of you all know as the United Way. And every department of the federal government does this every single year. Well, they spread the wealth around. But it's like millions and millions. Oh, and millions, millions and of millions dollars. and millions. It's a lot of work. So they spread the wealth every year. And uh, a cabinet level uh, individual is charged a different one each year with running that campaign. So here comes Donna Shalala's turn. So she calls on the uh, administrator of health, of the Health Resources and Services Administration, where I worked, and she said, okay, you're in charge. I'm putting you in charge. So what does my boss say? But he picks up the phone, he says, Betty, you're it. So for a year, he, he said, says, I'd love to do that oh, job. Gosh, you don't say no. I, he says, I'll give you another office 
So I had another office on the bottom floor of the building. And then my office was on the top floor, my real office on the top floor. So I had to go back and forth between that. He said, but you're in charge of it, but you're still going to carry out all of your other responsibilities. So I hired a contractor. What else do you do? You hire a contractor and he helped me run it. But that's how I got, really got to know Donna Shalala on a very different level. And um, she's just, she's a wonderful lady. I really admire her. Awesome. Great, great experience. So you had your federal civil servant career. Mm -hmm. you, you did your amazing things in public health. And then you retired from that and you mm -hmm. came to Hilton Head and became a realtor? No, not right away. Oh. I came to Hilton Head. I joined Hawaii. That was great. And I decided I was, it was time to play. I worked too hard for too many years. So I learned to play golf. That was my first thing. Learn wow. to learn to play golf. Um, went to luncheons, went to meetings with women, and I did this for about two years. And I'm saying there's something missing in my life, and it was being really busy intellectually. So my husband uh, was a retired real estate attorney, and he got into it from the sales perspective when he came here but he was always on the golf course so the phone would ring and i couldn't help these people so i got dragged kicking and screaming into the real estate field and that was uh 18 years ago and i love it Woohoo! i love it because i'm a people person i love it and what what is the best thing meeting the new people as they're coming to hilton head or is there some other well, I, I think a big part of it is getting to know people's dreams, um, being excited with them about an, a new phase of life or a relocation, sharing what you know about life on Hilton Head with them. And like I've always told my real estate clients, it, you know, it's not a transaction that's over and you don't see them. They become lifelong friends. That's great. That's awesome. So in life, sometimes we get thrown curveballs, and um, you definitely got thrown a curveball at um, some point. When you worked in women's health, did you ever think that you would be dealing with women's cancer for yourself? Absolutely not. There was no history of cancer in my family. So tell us a little bit about your cancer journey, because that's clearly one of your, um, the theme for Betty's year has been resilience. And clearly that's one of the things that she is, is resilient through her whole process of dealing with cancer. Well, I, I didn't have a whole lot of time to think about my cancer diagnosis because um, I had been not well for, for several months and I was dealing with a misdiagnosis. So when it was finally discovered that this is probably what I had, I had literally uh, about three days before I was into surgery. So I didn't have a lot of preparation, but coming out of it and hearing the, the surgeon say to me, um, well, you, if you can manage the chemotherapy, which is tough, uh, your prognosis will be better. But right now I give you 12 months to live. Oh my so goodness. That was a challenge to me. Uh, if somebody says you can't do this or you can't do that, nah, don't tell me that because I'll find a way to do it. So that was the start of that journey. And the only thing I can say to women who have a cancer diagnosis is you're going to be sad some of the time, but don't be angry. That's wasted energy. You need that energy to beat it. And most women are fortunate enough to beat it. And did you go up through MUSC for your I did. Um, treatment? I did. Yes. Yes. Uh, there was no way I could be treated here. Yeah. And the commuting back and forth to Charleston was okay. Well, I got to go to Costco a lot. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> so, uh, 
So it, I mean, it, it was okay. Um, it was just a journey that we looked forward to every three weeks and it was uh, six months, um, but it went fast. It went fast. So. And how many years are you now? A, nine uh, years. Nine years. You're coming up on 10. It'll be 10 years. 10 years this spring. Yeah. Careless toast to health. Yes. We're toasting to, toasting to Benny and good health. There you go. Well done. Um, so tell us a little bit more about what are the things that have helped you become the person you are today? Clearly your mm -hmm. career and your work life, your home life and your, and your blended family with children. Clearly your cancer create, I mean, all of those things are part of your personal story. Tell us a little bit about what do you think has been some of the biggest things that have helped you be the person you are today? I have to look back to when I was in the ninth grade. Well, I had an, my father's sister, uh, never married, and she was one of the only females in her law, law school class at American University, and she was a federal employee. She was my role model, and she never had any children, so she was always anxious to impart her knowledge to me. But I look back when I was 15 years old, I was getting ready to get out of the um, ninth grade. And I decided I love clothes. And my parents weren't wealthy and I didn't have a lot of clothes. So there's one way to get them. And that's go to work. Go to work. So I started looking in the newspaper classified ads and I told my mother and father, I'm going to work this summer. And they said, oh, really? Um, well, you're not going to work in a five and dime. You're not going to do any sales or anything like that. Well, that kind of limited me. So right out of ninth grade, I go to the dentist, get my checkup. And as I'm leaving, I said to him, um, do you need any help this summer? He says, as a matter of fact, now I'm 15 years old. As a matter of fact, I do. He says, uh, you go get yourself a uniform, uh, get your work permit, because I wasn't old enough to work back then. Oh my. And I started out, I worked all summer in the dental office. He, he trained me in chair side assisting. And then all the way through high school. I worked every afternoon after school and Saturdays. What a great job. So, and what, a, what a great guy to yeah. do that. And I was able to open up a charge account at Peck and Peck and get great clothes. <laughs> and get great clothes, yeah. <laughs> win, win, win. Right, right. That's great. So and when you think about um, your journey, what advice would you give to your younger self? Cool. Uh, we were talking about this earlier. I, I, that was so long ago, and none of you here on this session today are as old as I am. Um, it's hard to say what I would say to myself back in the 1960s, because so much has happened uh, to benefit women in, in the years since then. But I think if it were not that long ago and there were more opportunities, I think I would have said to myself, keep focused on your education. You can get married and have children later. But back then, that's not what we did. That's great. Is there any, would you give a different um, answer for people working in a different industry than where you grew up in the federal sector? Would it be a different answer outside of education? You know, I, I think you just have to, you have to know yourself and where your interests are and uh, just try to carve a path forward for yourself to be able to pursue those interests. I've never been in a job I didn't like. 
Um, and if I started to not like it quite as much, uh, I was fortunate in the federal government that I could look change. for something different and make the change. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, these are gonna be some rapid final round questions. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Do you have a best friend? Yes, my husband. Whoa, that's so great. <laughs> what um, what makes him your best friend? Um, I, being able to say whatever is on my mind, I'm not going to be judged for it. And he, ta I have to say, Neil, ta I'm a strong person, and he takes a lot of abuse. <laughs> but um, <laughs> he's very, he's far more easygoing. I'm the one that's always charging ahead. So yeah, it, it's that comfort zone, that comfort level. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite drink? Coffee. Do you have a uh, lot of it? Uh, no, no, caffeinated no, or decaf? Uh, caffeinated early in the morning or sometimes if I'm out running around during the day, I'll go by Starbucks. Uh, but my alcoholic drink that I enjoy the most is a mule. Oh, like a Moscow, Moscow mule. Moscow mule. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. your coffee just black? Or are you a macchiato guy? Or um... uh, I'm learning to drink it black to cut the calories. There you go. Mm -hmm. Do you like pumpkin spice? No, I no. am not a oh, pumpkin please. spice no. person. Plain oh. coffee. Yeah. No, black. no flavors. No flavors. Um, what's your favorite travel destination? Hmm. Uh, it's where Neil and I went on our honeymoon, Little Dick's Bay in Virgin Gorda, British Virgin Islands. I'm not a swimmer, but I did learn to scoop a snorkel there. Uh, it's beautiful. It's next to Hilton Head. It is truly paradise. They probably so, have blue water. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Which you can see through, um, not the Atlantic and Hilton Head. Tell us about your favorite thing in Hilton Head to do. What's your favorite thing you love to do locally? I love, I'm always watching the local magazines and the newspaper. I love to visit new businesses, whether it be a restaurant or um, the social bakery that just opened up on the South End. I just love to explore and find new experiences. Um, you know, most people say it's walking the beach. Well, I do that. But I don't have as much time to do that right now. I'll probably do more of it. I just love exploring the island. Are you doing anything for restaurant week? This is restaurant week. So are you out and about eating out for restaurant week? No. Yeah. No. Gonna, yeah. gonna kind of play it close to home. Do you have any other hidden story that you'd like to share today about your background? I have a, a, a funny story. It was not funny. It's interesting. We go back to my um, few years with the Navy Department, and this was back in 1962. And um, all of the various uh, components of the Navy Department, once a year, each one of them selected a queen. And I was with the Office of Naval Research back then. Well, lo and behold, I get selected queen of the Office of Naval Research. So after all of these queens are out there, the um, Navy Department, the head, the Secretary of Navy, has this big event, and they pick a Navy Department queen. So three days before I'm to marry this midshipman who's graduating from the Naval Academy, um, there was a big event at a hotel, and there was a panel of people. You walk into a room, you had a beautiful cocktail dress on, you walk into a room, there were naval officers, there were all, I don't even remember who was there. And you walk through and they ask you all these questions. So then I come out, you know, okay, fine. I sat down, my fiance was there in his full dress naval uniform. The outgoing queen was there, her, her escort, her boyfriend was from West Point. Oh my. So we had two very handsome gentlemen at the table. Next thing I know, uh, they announced me as queen of the Navy department. 
Woohoo! <laughs> Betty! That was back when I weighed 98 pounds, looked good in a skinny little cocktail dress. <laughs> and That's I great. thought, oh, this isn't going to work because I'm getting married in three days and you had to be single. <laughs> and they said, don't worry, you're single tonight. You can finish out your reign as Navy Department Queen. For oh the my gosh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. How much fun. Yeah, it was fun. That's fun. Um, let's see. Do we have any questions? Thank you, Betty. We've got uh, somebody on the chat pod. Thank you so much. Um, anybody have any questions for Betty that they'd like to have answered? I know I really appreciated Betty um, last year as my president elect and this year as president. And you can see why she was such a great person to lead our organization this year with the wealth of experience that she's got and just the terrific personality and contributions that she makes. We're um, really lucky to have her with her um, background. The um, the other upcoming dates that we've got for members. We do have a question, Tamara, can I interrupt? Oh, please do. Yeah, what, what are your plans for next year, Betty? That's Cindy uh, asking. My plans for next year? As pres past president. Well, I, you know, I don't get to evaporate next year. I'm still on the board in next, another year as past president. And you can see how involved Tamara is this year. Uh, so I still have another year to go, although not uh, with quite as many challenges as I faced uh, this year. But I, I really would like to um, get back to enjoying interest groups more. I have to cancel out on too many activities this year uh, because of meetings. But, I, you know, why he's my being president is my first priority, and I know everybody understands that. There's a lot of praise for you coming in on the chat. Mm -hmm. Betty, there's a question about what are the fun things that you do with your grandchildren? Fun things I do? You know, my grandchildren are, I've got the last three of the eight are graduating high school this spring. And they're all, you know, everybody's headed off to college. I don't see my grandchildren. I've got two in California. I've got three in New Jersey. And I've got four in Maryland. So unless we go up to Maryland, like we did this past Christmas, um, I don't really see them that much. So when they come to visit, what I enjoy most is getting up early in the morning before their parents get up and sitting down with a cup of coffee and just chatting with them and, and finding out. One of the things that I was asking them recently was um, this, oh, I'm going to get into a political swamp here. What is critical race theory that's being taught in the schools? And they all looked, they looked at me like I was nuts. What are you talking about, Grandma? We don't even know what that is. I said, well, good, I'm glad. So, <laughs> but I just like to get to know them as they're becoming young adults. And we have grandchildren who grand, graduated college and they're out in the world in careers now. So it's just fun seeing them all grown up and how they have taken different paths in their lives. I think it's always interesting when, when your child comes back and actually says something that you've said to them and you're like, <laughs> did that really just happen? Mm -hmm. You know, that they actually are listening and it came back to you and you're mm -hmm. like, wow, they do pay attention sometimes. Yes, they do. You know? They are listening all the time. That's fun. I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Betty and Tamara, thank you for hosting this. Uh, you two are awesome. And Betty is such a fantastic mentor to me. Uh, I know you're not disappearing next year. You, you have, you're... I don't know how you do the work that you're doing um, and also have a full-time job because you're you're just always thinking about us and how to how to keep everybody safe. I've I've I just think it's amazing. And I just want to know what are you binge watching 
these days on Netflix or Prime. And I, the reason I'm asking Betty this question is because she all, she sends me emails on her latest <laughs> her latest and greatest, okay. which I watch all of them. So Betty, what's hot? Okay, um, I haven't gotten back to Ozark yet. I want to, but my husband won't watch it. So I might have to watch it in the privacy of my office. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we did, uh, we just started watching that new program. Um, the woman across the street, the woman in the window across the street from the, it's got a real it's long title. It, yeah, it, it's kind of a, a, a thriller. So I'm watching that. But don't worry, I'll send you a new list of movies, Claudia. And then I'm trying to read all of these books, thanks to Janet Porter. <laughs> Just finished the great book, ladies, Lincoln Highway. I recommend it. Uh, if you read Gentleman in Moscow, Rules of Civility, that's the author, uh, Amor Knowles. Tolls, T-O-W-L-E-S. Tolls. 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 Thank you. Um, yeah, I like his writing style. It's it's very different from the other two books, but um, I enjoyed it. Gentleman in Moscow was such a fun oh, book. Oh, yes. That was fun. Do we have any other questions right now for Betty? There weren't any questions, but apparently there are other people who've worked for the Navy and honeymooned in Little Dick's Bay. Oh, tell them to email me. Linda, is Linda Jackson. Yes, that's me. <laughs> Linda, Linda, you work for the Navy Department, right? Yep, yep. Isn't that funny? So many, like Tamara was saying, this has been a great way to find connections yeah. that we don't necessarily take the time to do. Absolutely. So and Betty, this is, this is Allison. I worked for the Navy for 30 oh. years. And I've never heard of the Queen of the Navy. That is so cool. That is because <laughs> you are so much younger. <laughs> this was, Allison, this is 1962. I know, but I just, I had never heard of that. And I dealt with yep. the Office of Civil Research all the time. So very yep. fun. And, I, and I've got the weekly credit union newsletter that has the picture with, did you know Fred Corp, Secretary of Navy? Okay, see, she's much younger than I am. <laughs> okay. Who who they who went to Little Dick's Bay? Linda. Linda, Linda Jackson. Me. Oh, Linda Jackson did. Okay. <laughs> well, I looked it up today because I want to go back. It's only um eighteen hundred dollars a night. Oh my God. are you kidding? Uh, without <laughs> meals. Whoa. Oh. What? I told her I think she should go. I, I, I think <laughs> I need to sell a couple more houses. <laughs> I think you deserve it. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's funny. So on February 14th, we're going to have Lisa Lahneman. She's also a public health professional, dealt with a lot of infectious disease and uh, other things. Uh, Sue Grossback up here on the screen. We're excited to have her as an educator have a chat. And then Claudia Aller will be up in March as a banker, financial, um, financial person and her background. So we've tried to get all different women with different backgrounds coming in to have a chat so you can just learn a little bit more about the women and their interesting backgrounds that we have within our um, wonderful association. We really appreciate Betty um, and all things Betty and everything that she does for all of us as president. Thank you, Betty. And thank um, you for the privilege her of sharing, sharing. Uh, her sharing her personal story and um, journey with us along the way. Mm -hmm. I always appreciate my time with Betty and I hope you did too today. And ladies, please don't forget to sign up for the February luncheon. Please, please. Okay, and thank you many to Alice for being our um, Zoom sir today and uh, helping us along the way as well. By the way, yeah, Tamara, there's a nomination for you to be in the spotlight. So I'll have to yeah. figure out how to make that happen since you're you're moderating the whole thing. Oh, Lori, we'll have to drink bourbon for that. It's all good. <laughs> okay.
All right. Enjoy the rest of your day, ladies. Go on and do great things. We'll Bye, see you later. Bye-bye.